Hello everyone, Dr. Judy here, Dr. Judy WTF. And thank you audience for joining in. I just want you to know how meaningful you are to me. And uh, I am always so delighted when people learn. And then even years later, um, call in and, and, and tell me how much they've learned and how much their lives have changed as a result. So I really, really appreciate you. And sometimes I like to bring a little levity to heavy subjects. So bear with my humor here. Uh, but as I was sitting on my own couch, I thought, you know, it's spring. Let's do some spring cleaning. And then, of course, my mind went to, how about purging narcissists and the narcissistic traits within ourselves? So that's what the show is about. And um, I'm going to launch into a little bit about the Psychological Healing Center. Uh, we are located in Sherman Oaks and all over the world because we do Zoom and love to talk to anybody from around the world. We coach and teach the mind map. And um, you're welcome to learn this process, which I will briefly introduce you to if you haven't already seen it. So the mind map is predicated on childhood wounds and how they embed and encode in us and how they take us down and how to morph out of all the mess. So um, <clears throat> if you would put the mind map up, thank you so much. You are already ahead of me. I don't know why it looks a little blurry, but I'll, I'll read it out loud here so that you can understand. So panels one, two, and three represent the wounds of, ch of childhood. Oh, there we go. So nice and clean. The wounds of childhood, our reactions to those wounds, you could see the broken glass and the uh, the pink and the, the brokenness of the uh, of this human psyche, which is a, is a, the metaphor uh, representing panel two. And then how all of these horrible messages from our childhood encode into the fiber of our being, leaving us compromised, leaving us um, low in self-esteem, leaving us believing in a bunch of lies and misperceptions and misconceptions about ourselves in the world. So if we're not set up correctly, in other words, if our family is not healthy and, um, and, and not giving the fundamentals of, of mental health, I refer back to Dr. John Bowlby, um, eye contact, skin contact, breastfeeding, mirroring, attunement, being there, being solid for the, the, the children, being a solid uh, family participant. If that is not very well intact, then you can expect that um, the whole system is not going to be built very correctly. And as a result of the system gone wrong, you could see that it breaks down. So when the family bonds break down, we break down and everybody around us breaks down. And you can see in panels number four, five, and six, we've got chaos where everyone is um, flying off the handle and there's no structure. There's no real north, south, east, west orientation, no bonds. And then you can see in panel number five, what happens is when we are vulnerable and <clears throat> we're not solidified in in a structured environment and a, a safe uh, family or community, we resort to defenses. And I'll call that department the drug, sex, rock and roll department. And it represents a lot of things. Um, defenses like smoking, drinking, overeating, um, any kind of defenses using cell phones, porn, uh, shutting down, sleeping too much. and. We're very creative. I can go on and on about defenses. And uh, as a matter of fact, if you haven't read my book, Be the Cause, Healing Human Disconnect, please do get it. You can download it and uh, grab your free copy. Just ask for it. Give us um, your email so that we can send it to you. And then you can learn all about this mind map. So going back to the mind map, um, you can see that if everything... Uh, doesn't go well at all, we are headed for breakdown and breakthrough, if we're lucky. So breakdowns can be an opportunity. I have discussed that on previous shows where breakdowns sometimes turn out to be um, 
horribly messy, horribly painful. However, if you want to look at it another way, they can be our curse by design and our opportunity to uh, break through. Now, if you go down to panels number 789, that's where the paradigm shift happens. That's where we, um, we, we so to speak, capitalize on our healing uh, as we become well integrated or better integrated on a mind, body, soul level as we become better versions of ourselves and better able to interconnect and synergize with other people. Uh, we become the light, meaning we have energy to share, philosophies to share, love to share, and a lot of um, goodness comes out of the work that we do on ourselves and the people that we choose to uh, integrate ourselves with and, and, and synergize with. And if that goes well, then we end up growing. So healing is the growth panel it's the recoding panel it's where things get recoded from the darkness of the past into something new sustainable and evolving so if you look at the dna in panel number eight you could see that the people those are little people by the way climbing up the ladder they're uh climbing on solid bonds the dna ladder is strong uh the dna is immersed in clean, clear water so that the environment is healthy and uh, conducive to our well-being. And if all that goes right, then we um, reach a state of balance or unity, and then we be the cause of a better outcome of part two of our lives. So I chose the topic um, spring cleaning because it's now, what are, where are we now? March 23rd, 2023 and we're headed into springtime and uh what do people do they do spring cleaning so because i'm a psychologist i thought well why not apply spring cleaning to the psyche and that's what we're going to do tonight is we're going to do some spring psychological cleaning and um as a result um, hopefully it'll lead to a rebooting of your system, a better version of yourself, better choices for yourself, and ridding yourself of a lot of toxic people, uh, ridding yourself of your own narcissism, which we will delve into because so many people, they, uh, they, they, they're not aware that, uh, they're carrying around their own bag of narcissism. And we, we really need to constantly check our consciousness, meaning our intentions, where we're coming from, so to speak. And we have to check that our consciousness, which is causal, according to Maxwell Planck, father of um, uh, quantum physics. So if we, uh, if we, if we're aware that our consciousness is causal, then we have to monitor our consciousness and make sure that we're not in a consciousness of narcissism, selfishness, apathy, and so on. So we will delve into this. And of course, this is a call-in show. And I welcome everyone to please call in, get on the couch, and share with me what the Freud is going on in your life. And just to share with you what the Freud is going on in my life, um, first of all, I am um, at the, the last stage of editing my healing from narcissistic abuse video, and I'm really excited about it. And particularly, I want to um, pre-announce, well, I guess it's not pre because I'm announcing it now, uh, that I am part of this um documentary that Amy Redford and um, Jeff I'm trying to think of the name of the production company it'll it'll come to me um, uh, so about uh, December something I flew out to Utah and I was interviewed by Amy Redford because she's doing a big production on um, narcissism and there are many people that are going to be in this documentary and i'm very honored that i was 
part of this. And um, as a result of that, um, I'm going to be able to share with you how to get free access to the series, which is coming out in June. And then right around the time this comes out, I'll have the video hopefully ready before then so that you can begin to heal from narcissistic abuse. Because what I've found is that a lot of people have tons of amazing information. Uh, it's just that um, there, there's a lack of a, a very solid treatment plan and a pathway out of this psychological prison, as I like to call it. So um, this video will come with the um, journal, Healing from Narcissistic Abuse, and um, eventually you'll be able to partake in uh, webinars uh, around this topic and, of course, individual uh, sessions with me or one of my staff. So that's news. And the other news that I wanted to share is that I had a wonderful talk with one of my very favorite people that I've been in communication with um, just over the years. And I decided to reach out to him because people have been telling me, Dr. Judy, you two think alike and you, you need to talk. So I thought, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to call this person. And his name is Dr. Gabor Mate, uh, amazing man. He's a psychiatrist. He lives in Canada. And we have so much in common because we're both Hungarian Jews. I'm an ex-Canadian. And we both left Hungary back in 1956 during the revolution. And we just have too much in common to um, we just have so much in common. And that's just the beginning of it. We have very, very similar philosophies. We're both um, interested in trauma and childhood wounds. And I am now listening to his audio book, which I wanna plug for him because he deserves it, called The Myth of Normal. Fantastic book. And when I'm listening to it, it reminds me of Be the Cause, my own book, because somehow the philosophies match up. So. Have a listen or have a read, and he's a pro prolific writer, a wonderful person, and he agreed to come on my show after I read his book, which I will, with, with bated breath, called Scattered Minds, and it's about ADD, ADHD, and we are also similar in our philosophy in that regard because we both feel and think and research substantiates it is that when we're traumatized our con our cognitions get scattered and messed up leaving us with symptoms that uh, um, show up as ADD ADHD symptoms so anyway I think I've updated you uh, and so far as what's coming up and I'll continue to make announcements and I'll let you know when he will be on the show and very busy man so I'm just very grateful that I had a chance to to speak with him. So purging, purging for the summer, for the spring, and then uh, um, entering into the summer season, we're hopefully, we're healthier, we're better, we're lighter, we're um, in a, a psychologically better space. So number one, purging the narcissist from your life. Why do that? Well, it's obvious. I can't tell you how many people call me every day uh, crying about their narcissistic husbands, wives, uh, brothers, sisters, bosses, and so on, and how they become sickened by them and how they feel um, gaslit and demeaned and devalued by them. And then, of course, um, many people will uh, be able to relate this back to the inception of where they they were were wounded so that they then did a what the Freud and chose narcissistic people. So let's track that a little bit and go back to the mind map and talk about how narcissism is born and why we need to purge narcissistic people from our lives. And I don't mean that in a cruel way. I mean that in in a way where, if you if you continue to um, if you continue to immerse yourself 
in a, nar in a narcissistic system, it will make you sick. So let's look at this injury called the narcissistic wound. And I refer to it as the wound of apathy. So when you grow up in a household where mom or dad or your primary caregivers are just not caring enough, they don't have the ability to connect to you, they don't feel for you, it sets you up for um, building uh, the narcissistic wall and shutting down your own emotions or on the other hand, uh, becoming a people pleaser and uh, trying so hard to connect to people who are not able to connect back and creating what is known as a, a toxic bond. When you bond to somebody who's incapable of bonding back to you, um, you're in trouble because you're in, they're out, they have power and control over you, you're vulnerable, and you're the one that's going to get hurt because they could easily walk away because let's face it, they're just not that invested. And so why do we need to purge these people and how to purge these people and how to recognize people who really are uh, psychologically, uh, spiritually, and physically injurious to you? Well, let, let me let me take a step back and say that um, th these narcissistic um, the traits are born out of these narcissistic wounds. And these narcissistic wounds are um, a result of a system gone wrong where the parents put their own feelings and agendas and needs before their own children. And so again, they lack empathy. And uh, I I instead of being nurturing and supportive, they um, either ignore their children's feelings or they enroll their children in, in tasks and um, lifestyles that benefit them. And as a result, they suck the energy right out of their own children, leaving them feeling um, lost, hopeless, um, and, and really unlovable. And this is the the sad part of the, the narcissistic injury is that the blueprint from the family of origin leaves the person very vulnerable to pairing with other others that are narcissists. So let, let's look at it this way. When you have a blueprint that is, um, is, is a blueprint of apathy, then you think that that's normal. If you have parents that used you, you're vulnerable to being used. If you haven't been taught empathy, then it's possible that you you have yourself learned to be apathetic. So we've got to really, really look at this because this is the um, the core of our mental unhealth. I'm I'm convinced that if we can um, wrestle with narcissism and dismantle it on a um, a causal level, if we can dismantle our own narcissism, then we are going to be um, on a pathway to better mental health, not only in this generation, but we're going to pass it down to the next generation as well. And that's the intention of the mind map is to heal our wounds so that not only can we be better, uh, but that we could pay it forward and then our kids could pay it forward and grandchildren will pay it forward and so on and so forth. Um, so let's go into how to recognize people that are narcissists and how do you know who to purge and who not to purge? Well, let's keep it simple. If you're not feeling valued by another person, if you're not feeling valued by your boss, your friend, your lover, your husband, your wife, your significant other, if you're not feeling valued, well, that's pretty much of a dead giveaway. I was just speaking to somebody who um, is suffering from the wounds of her narcissistic mother, and she used a very interesting phrase. I'm trying to recall the words that she used, but she said something like, I feel like I'm, 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 I'm empty. It's empty. When I'm around her, it feels empty. In other words, 
She doesn't even register on her mother's Richter scale. So all her mother needs her for is to service her. So these are some dead giveaways. If you feel like you're an object instead of a person, if you feel like you're meaningless to the person, if you're uh, just a, an alternative rather than a, a significant choice for them, then these are the people that you want to red flag, that you may want to um, think twice about carrying. You don't want to spring forward to people who are going to vampire your energy, vampire your money, vampire your um, your sense of meaningfulness, uh, vampire your your body. Because what happens is when we are around people who use us, abuse us, gaslight us, demean us, devalue us, and and dump us and casually um, discard us, dump us, um, we not only suffer psychologically, uh, but the mind and the body being that they are so connected, the mind and the body create um, stress and symptoms born out of stress. And then we get into a diseased state and then the diseases, uh, the medical diagnoses start creeping in like fibromyalgia and high blood pressure and heart problems and stomach problems and on and on and on. So it, it, we're delicate creatures and we cannot stand toxicity. And that's why it's so important to watch who you hang out with because who you hang out with is going to uh, penetrate, infiltrate is the word I like to use, into the fiber of your being, especially if you haven't had good defense mechanisms in the course of your life. Because if you're not defense, if you're not well defended, if you don't know how to vet people, then you um, are more vulnerable to allowing people in and wreak havoc on your life. And this is a call-in show, everybody. So please do call in. Um, let's do some self-reflection and self-correction today and sort through our friends, our family, our, 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 our bosses, our coworkers, anybody that could um, be destructive to your life now and in the future. And also, more importantly, who do we have most control over is ourselves. So yes, hi, Dale, how are you? Nice to hear from you. Hey, Dr. Judy. How are you doing? Nice to hear from you. Yeah, thank you. I'm doing good. How, how would you go about purging, uh, just just brainstorming here, if you were to um, make a list of all of your uh, uh, narcissists, would you categorize them in some way? Would you prioritize them in some way? What, what would you do? Okay, that those are great questions. So I, I have to say that I have some people that are um, – narcissistic in my life and um they also have some nice qualities so i don't purge them out of my life because um i also recognize the damage that they went through and um i know how i know how to limit my time in contact with them and they bring enough enough light into my life so that 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 I don't purge them. So I'm, I'm going on the other end of the scale. Okay. So truth be known, there's some people in my life that have narcissistic traits and tendencies. I don't purge them out of my life because, um, because they bring some, some level of intellect or interest or um, loyalty to my life. And so I just don't. Well, I was I was using it I, I was using it in the sense of what would your advice be to the general public, not necessarily in the people that are in your life, but but if you okay. were to go about a spring cleaning. Okay. And, so, and my thinking is, is that yes. you'd organize it in some kind of a fashion, so you just like if you were going through your house and deciding what to get rid of, All right. you'd All right. prioritize it somehow. 
Fair, fair, fair enough. Uh, and, and, and sorry to go on and on with my own, own example. I did, I did want to bring it in, though, because sometimes you don't have to go so radical and, you know, and dumb people that have some sort of a value to your life. Okay, so now how do you categorize them? So there are all kinds of narcissists. I um, talk about uh, grandiose narcissists and covert narcissists. And then there are the, um, the communal narcissists who um, look great to the public, but not so nice to the family. And then, of course, there are the malignant narcissists. So I would say that the malignant narcissists, they just got to go. I mean, that's obvious. They're robbing you. They're backstabbing you. They're um, they're 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 getting you possibly even in in legal trouble and they may even be so close to sociopathy that they may be endangering your life so let let's let's go for that that big group right there they've got to be out do you agree dale i mean that that's just non-negotiable so if there's anybody yeah i, I in, think right okay yeah, so I next think a... yeah go ahead <laughs> Well, and I see, okay, I, <clears throat> the way I would do it is I would, those are the types of narcissists, but within, I'd say, okay, first I'd immediately get my immediate family um, and lay it out those, and then the people I have at work, and okay. then uh, uh, friends and neighbors, the, the people that you might socialize with, <clears throat> and then within those groups, and then you have to prioritize, okay, who do I gray rock, or who do I, um, you know, abandon completely? And then you lay all those things out. So at least it's somewhat organized, but then try to measure <clears throat> the results and find out how much better your life is when you're not always walking into the trap of the, of the narcissist trap. And, uh, uh, I, and oh, you, know, you might wanna... take those times off where you're actually away from them to go do something fun for yourself, mm -hmm. exploring a new um, uh, interest so that you actually – see positive results from uh, the purge, uh, so to speak. You see what I'm saying? Well, I know that you have done quite a bit of purging. And so I think you bring up a good point, which is to look at your immediate environment, because the people that you interface with most are the people that are going to have the most influence on your life, correct? Right. So those are the... And, and, there, and it may be a timing thing. There could be a timing thing. You, it, you, you can't do everything all at once, but you have to do it strategically. You can't just do it without giving it uh, some thought that, that there will be repercussions uh, to some extent, and particularly if it's somebody at work or if it's a family situation. Okay. Um, you've often brought up people are trapped because maybe they're living with them and they have no other housing situation right. uh, in the short term, uh, or they're working with the person. They have no other job alternative. So yes. there's got to be ways to go about it, but I think getting it, getting it down and kind of getting it in your mind and then understanding what who they are and why they're so weak and why they're so angry and why they do the things they do. And uh, I was just watching a show the other day, and <clears throat> they brought up that um, people who mistreat pets are oftentimes oh, yes. sociopathic or, or you know, and I recall going up through uh, childhood, seeing people who had no conscience, no empathy for teasing others or, or hurting others, animals mm -hmm. or pets or, or, or friends or people. Mm -hmm. And now I think about it, they are very narcissistic people yes. or, or, or worse. So, And that was a good way for me to kind of get a summary of, and, and I look back through family situations, that the, some of the worst narcissistic people were also the ones who had no problem um, teasing incessantly and and causing problems and and then when the problems got out of hand then they'd say you know oh don't look at me I didn't do anything <laughs> so 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 I think that um, you're already beginning to categorize by looking at some telltale signs and these are also tell telltale signs of sociopathy. If somebody is hurting an animal, um, that's a telltale sign that they lack uh, empathy. If somebody is treating you in an objectified sense, whether it be um, sexually or 
or, or bossing you around and not acknowledging um, the effort that you make to add to their life. If people around you are seeing through you and not giving you any kind of mirroring or eye contact or any kind of attunement, these are signs that um, your, your energy is going to be um, zapped by them because nothing's going to come back. Um, so, so, so first great, great way to see it, clean out your inner circle. However, be careful with that because that inner circle might be your boss. Who's paying your paycheck. It might be your husband or wife. You don't want to, uh, dismantle the entire family. So, um, so, so these are not easy, right? They're, they're not easy purges to make. Um, but it, it, there comes a point, and I call it critical mass, where um, as much as you want to hang on to a person that brings some sort of value into your life, the, the scale tips, okay? The scale tips. And uh, you just can't go on anymore. And your motivation to even uh, be there or uh, even bring them uh, a, a glass of water, you, you you begin to feel that you can't anymore. And Dale, you know this, the healthier you get, the more you notice um, the vampire effect, the more you notice how your body's feeling uh, with the people around you, the more you're aware of um, gaslighting and you're aware of um, betrayal and you're aware of um, people who um, as generally lack empathy to whatever degree they do. And so the smarter you get and the more psychologically aware you get, um, the more you're going to notice. And so once you start to notice these qualities, you can just red flag them in your mind and um, don't do anything particularly radical. Just because I use the word purge your narcissist doesn't mean that Tomorrow, you're going to go delete, 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 delete. Think about it, because after all, um, there, there are people who cannot say goodbye to their narcissistic boss tomorrow. There are some people who are tied to family, and they own uh, property together, and they have children together, and they have a lot to consider. So um, at least what people can start to do is notice, get psychoeducated, and then start making decisions insofar as timing. So if you're in a relationship and you feel yourself getting sicker and sicker, uh, you've got to decide when it's time to um, exit. Um, so, Dale, how, how did you do it when you started getting better and your boundaries started getting better? How, how did you go about um, saying goodbye or distancing yourself from people that didn't? Well, I think I think the, when, when you realize when you realize that the, these people really have no um, um, direct benefit to you to begin with, uh, that they don't really care about you, that any. Um, um, projected uh, um, feeling of, of, of affection or anything oftentimes is false because it, it's usually uh, the very next day pulled back and, and made 10 times worse with all the injuries. So uh, you begin to realize that, gee, I was, I'm not losing anything. <laughs> I'm actually that's gaining by getting point. them out of my life. That, and, uh, and then start looking at how peaceful and, and you, once you understand your process, of knowing that it's not you and you shouldn't feel guilty that you aren't doing anything wrong all you're doing is is healthy psychological uh, uh, balancing of your life mm -hmm. and that these are the people that are sick then when they start pulling the shenanigans and doing all of their things that they try to do mm -hmm. you're not impacted by it because you say you're the one that's sick i mean even if you don't say it physically i mean in your mind you're saying here they come <laughs> and they're doing their games that's and right. uh, they're injured and they're angry and they're projecting, but it doesn't impact me and I'm not going to be affected by it. So <clears throat> you can so gradually pull away from those. And they sense that. And, and the funny thing is the more they sense it, 
the less they want to be around you because I think they feel threatened by that. Well, what's the biggest threat? What's the biggest threat for a narcissist? You you you, you know what the biggest exposure. Threat is. Exactly. It's I think it's it, it's being exposed. Their their false public self is being exposed, and they can't take that. I I asked my my father was having a we were having a fiftieth wedding anniversary, and I was going to be the host at the request of the family to speak for him. Mm-hmm. Um, and I called him uh, that morning to say, I want to give you a little, all the people coming a, a background of how you grew up and so on. He yes. blew up into a complete rage and said, if you say anything, I'm walking out, I'm not coming. Da, 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 da. <laughs> and no. it was typical because that was who he was. He could not um, expose his inner self to anybody. It, it he obviously was very much ashamed of, of whatever it was that he thought. I thought he had a great life, but in his mind, it wasn't. So it wasn't. Well, um, I think not being a fool and not being easily fooled, and that takes education, psychological education, and experience with people, and just being in your body and feeling what it's like to be around that other person. And uh, just like you wouldn't want to breathe in secondhand smoke or be in a, uh, an as- asbestos-filled room, you also don't want to be around uh, people who are taking from you because it's going to um, it's gonna it's it's gonna harm you. There's no better way to put it. It's just gonna harm you one way or the other. If especially if you don't have uh, good boundaries to um, protect yourself against people who uh, would like to take take your your soul out of your being, then um, you're going to be one of the vulnerable ones. And you're going to even physically, I, I, I remember watching this particular YouTube of a woman who was on crack cocaine and you could see a timeline. And at first she's very young and vibrant and beautiful. And then Two months later, her skin starts to change. And then four months later, she's really losing weight and she's hollowing out and you can see physically. And uh, I think that if we pay attention to ourselves and just the physicality of who of, of how we feel, there will be evidence in our bodies that we shouldn't be around these people. Just like... I think if you if if you were to say uh, everybody that is hurt by narcissists um, is I, I, is my understanding and maybe I'm wrong, but it, they're codependent on other people affirmations. They're codependent on somebody approving them, and you're looking yes. to the narcissist to give it to you, but he never will or she never will, never because uh, you're just a, a toy to them. They're just playing with you, and that's right. So what you really got to go to is is you've got to gain your independence and get, not be codependent, but be independent. And the more you can lean to the independence, and learn how to uh, feel mm-hmm. free of that need to be with those narcissistic people. Yes. The stronger you'll get, the more you'll realize, I never needed them to begin with. And why is it? Right. I think you have to look to yourself a lot. You know, you're reminding Look inside me. yourself and say, who am I? And why am I always feeling like I have to go to these people? Um, I'm, they're like the drug. I mean, you're talking about they're like a drug to you. And, why, and they do take you down just like drugs do. Reverse it. Get off of them. Throw them out and uh, become healthy again. Uh, psychologically and physically. So, so now it takes us to um, how do we rid ourselves of these narcissistic qualities? Because we're not perfect. We all have aspects of ourselves that are selfish or um, emotionally numb, or we live in a world that's uh, so overstimulated we can't possibly feel empathy. Single. Uh, um, human pain on the planet, we'd be burned out. So that's not possible to do. And so as a result of this overwhelm, um, we still have to maintain our humanity. So let, let's do the mirror, mirror on the wall and, and, and self-reflect. And how do we know uh, if we're 
copycatting narcissistic traits. So um, any, any comment you want to make about that? Because as, I'm, I'm sure as you went through your self-reflection. <clears throat> well, I think. Said, yes, go ahead. I, I, think, I think if you measure your empathy, I, I, I really feel that empathy is the measure of narcissism. And, and, and if your empathy for others or empathy of situations is low, then your narcissistic value is high. And if your empathy is great or in greater, then it, it's it's an inverse relationship. And um, <clears throat> I, I know for myself, I'm very empathetic. You know, I mean, uh, I, I feel for a lot of people. And I guess yes. I would kind of sometimes after having studied this, I feel like a super empath. Yes. Mainly because of the education behind it, and and I and I have a second sense of people. Uh, what they're feeling, and, and I can sense what um, uh, narcissists are, are operating in, in the room and that type of thing. And I've always been alert to it because I've always been the fixer in the family, and I've always had to look ahead of, of time to take care of issues before they got there. <clears throat> but um, I think empathy is a key measure of, of measuring uh, narcissism. If you are uh, feeling no empathy to people in bad situations or a hurt situation or you don't care, mm -hmm. then that's a, that's a bad quality I'm, in my mind. Yes, very much so. I call it missing the empathy chip. As a matter of fact, um, the, the video that I'm working on right now, Healing from Narcissistic Abuse, I call it the wound of apathy. It's the wound of apathy is what we're looking at. And so why why would it be that even people who are not high on narcissism have some of these traits because our our, our multi-generational past is imperfect and sometimes we um we copycat some of these traits uh parents who numb out on us parents who don't nurture us enough uh parents who are not able to put themselves in our shoes and 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 mirror us so that we can become um, mirrors to others. So it, it takes that self reflection and 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 looking at. I, I'm going back to consciousness as causal. So um, we've got to understand that when we're in a consciousness of I don't care about you, we're in trouble. Because even though we may have that wall around us and feel nice and cozy and protected because we don't care. So, you know, nobody can hurt us. We just well, don't if care. you don't have if you don't care about someone, if you don't have empathy for someone, you can't love someone. That's if, right. If you can't a narcissist that can't really love anybody because deep down they they don't really care. I mean, there may be a level that they they think they a lot of times they want to possess and control. Yes. They really don't want to get down to the level of, I really care about you, because if you turn on them in any way, you don't buy their control, you don't buy their sadistic or hurtful ways, uh, exactly. and you challenge them, boy, you've become enemy number one. And um, and if, they, if you are not controllable in the final instance, they'll run from you, and, and, um, or worse, they'll try to hurt you. And what you end up doing is, is seeing the true colors come out when you challenge a narcissist. Um, my wife and I, <laughs> over the last years, got into some social circles, and we, they like to play games around the card table, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. And my wife is just an amazing uh, game player. I mean, when I first met her years ago, mm -hmm. uh, anything I played, and, and I, she could beat me 10 times to one. Huh. And I was really okay. proud of her. And, and she'd go to places where they'd have tournaments, and she'd pick people right down the line. And there, these people would just get incensed and furious and throw the game down and walk off and yell, mm -hmm. you're a cheater, you're a cheater. Well, huh. in these social circles, we were noticing all of these people that would, you cheated, you cheated, you didn't play right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Narcissists cannot lose because, and then I started, when I understood the narcissist, I thought, these are the narcissists. They can't. Oh, you know, it hurts them to lose, and they're very bad losers. So if you ever know marker. anybody like that? Yes, yes, and, and I think that's another that's... marker: power and control versus love and intimacy. They don't exist in the same space. They just 
um, don't. So we all have a tendency to want to power and control. And, and we all have a tent, you know, some of us, most of us have a, a, a tendency to um, um, have traits that we're not particularly proud of. So I think one, one thing that we can do to help ourselves get back in touch is the reach down into your heart, just reach down into your heart. And, um, and, and, and when you're in the face of another person, ask yourself, what can I do to add light? What can I do to add some kind of a level of quality to that other people? Because synergy, in my opinion, and I'm sure it's your opinion also, is the best game in town, right? Your light plus my light makes more light. We pay it forward. It feels amazing to make a difference to another human being. And, uh, and it, it just feels good on a somatic level too, when you release these uh, powerful feelings of care and, 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 and love for another human being. I don't think there's any better feeling than that in the world. And so once you, um, you allow yourself to um, have that, that type of, of, it, of, of life, of interfacing with other human beings that way, I think that you can actually start to enjoy that and and think to yourself. Well, another measure, another yes. measure besides empathy, you were asking how can you tell if you're narcissistic or or not. Another measure I think is uh, can you admire and and truly honor another person for their accomplishments without being jealous and envious and and, and spiteful. And I have no problem. I, I admire lots of people from from everyday occurrences, uh, and I have no problem telling them. You know, if 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 we have a good waitress, like, you're an excellent waitress, and just a small comment doesn't cost me a dime, but boy, it makes Not their day. And uh, a lot of these young people today have never hear a compliment, and so if you're capable of giving compliments, and if you're capable of admiring and honoring somebody else's accomplishments without jealousy and spiteful and 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 all of those hateful things that's a good measure of whether or not you're narcissistic and and i see that um people who cannot truly respect and honor someone else's accomplishments without criticism and 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 throwing digs at them and so on you know what i'm saying i do and i think that's a huge measure of empathy being happy for somebody's happiness and isn't it interesting how rare that is when you listen to a conversation just kind of listen in on a conversation you might hear something like oh you know the other day i uh i got my um certificate in such a in such a a program and then the person might say something like oh wow yeah i got uh i got an award for something the other day also so it's like rip it right from you instead of saying, wow, oh, that's amazing. I'm so happy for you. You must feel really good about that. Or they might say, or they might say well, that's not such a big deal. Uh, they, yeah. they, they put it down. It's a put down. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you'll see that. And, and so there's your telltale. I mean, I, I, until I knew this was how the game was played, I, had no, I went through life totally unaware of all these things. Mm -hmm. But now that I'm aware of how it's played, what they're doing and who who does it and why they do it uh it's so obvious and you can be very um at peace knowing what you know and 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 saying okay i'm not impacted by this because they're the ones that are injured they're the ones that are hurting inside and i've got these deep uh insecurities and thank god i'm not there and i've gotten beyond any of that and don't want to play that game i mean isn't it a beautiful game of life i refer to panel number seven where you contribute and then your partner, your friend, whoever contributes thing. And that building something creates um, more flow and more unity and more wisdom and more creativity and and then then more enjoyable. And so I think it's that, a big difference be Yes. It's a big difference between
to all those are positive uh, moving forward attributes. And if you were uh, two people or more doing those together, mm -hmm. the, the world's your oyster. Anything can be accomplished. It's when you're codependent on someone else and you're codependent on their approval, on their nod of approval and their, their voice and so on. You've given up your power to someone else and nothing is getting accomplished. They're using you. They're going to play with you. They're going to toy you. That codependence is what you've got to learn to get away from. You've got to learn to become independent mm -hmm. and not feel guilty about it, not feel sad about it, not feel hurt about it, because you're not losing anything. You're gaining right. uh, wisdom and all the things that you just mentioned. The, the, uh, of the, and I think that's part of the learning process that people going through the healing have to understand. Get away from being so codependent on these people that are never going to really benefit you. So, so you're talking about what I mentioned earlier, better me creates a better we. So you pull out of the uh, codependency and you become stronger, your boundaries become um, a, a better, you become more of a, I call it a semi-permeable membrane, you're not locking people out, nor are you allowing people to just have a free ride, uh, you're, you're vetting people properly. And when you vet people properly and you've got the right people in your circle, then all of that is available to you. And I think that, you know, talking about spring cleaning, right? If I think about spring cleaning my house, I think, well, it's gonna be so enjoyable to open up my closet and have clothes that that I like to to wear and know that I could take all the old clothes and give somebody joy by do donating or gifting it to them. Oh, it'll be so nice to walk into my home and it'll be fresh and clean and so on. And so same thing, walking into our own psyche, right? We want to walk into our own psyche and say, this is a peaceful, loving place. And I'm going to have a lot of fun in life. And why am I going to have a lot of fun in life? Because I'm going to be connected. And what a pleasure it is to be connected. And what a pleasure it is to be connected to people who want the same thing. Because it's just, you know, let's just talk about how, how unfun. Is that a word? Unfun. It's not fun. When Doctor? Yeah? Pardon me? Um, I, it looks like the sound is off, uh, according is to. It? Really? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. So I, was uh, I can hear you, but. I... Okay, so I just wanted to the make other... a point about how how not fun it is. Like, oh, did you see my car? Yeah, I saw your car. Did you see my car? Yeah, uh, yeah. And then that is this like clashing and isolating and 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 no intricate. It's just boring, not fun and um that's why it's so precious when you have a friend or a husband or wife or a partner or anybody where you're growth partners that's what i strive for in my life to be a growth partner and have people around me who are growth partners and have an audience that's growing and sharing their their wisdom and uh, hopefully i can add something to their life uh, which which I benefit so much from um, sharing what I can share with with people that I have the opportunity to share with and it's just it's fun it's exciting it's invigorating uh, it makes me feel like um, like I want to I want to be in this life and the other is just draining and um, negative and hollow and meaningless and competitive and nasty and i guess i can go on and on um so i really appreciate you sharing because i think you crossed that corner uh a long time ago where you 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 definitely had that paradigm shift and i think that's what makes you a free individual and you're certainly not in any sort of uh psychological prison which is why you get to play and love and be loved and and um and and, and surround your pe yourself with people who are like-minded and like-spirited so um any other last well, it's, it's, comments it, 
it's tough to find like-minded, like-spirited people in this world. Um, I know. Uh, everybody I... seems to have their hang-ups, and and uh, and it's never an ending process. You're always going back to say, okay, where was I, and how did I get here? That's the thing that I think I've learned that you have to always keep uh, exploring this because um, every time I do, I, I come up with new thoughts and feelings, just like this tonight's phone call. I mean, I think we've we've covered quite a bit. Now, I, I commented, I saw the comments that said people saying the sound was off. I was hoping that wasn't too long, but oh. anyway, I'll let you have your evening, but I, re I do appreciate your show, and I wanted to uh, jump on and, and talk with you. That was really, really, really kind, and thank you. I always love to hear from you, and uh, so I'll just conclude by saying really appreciate my audience, and uh, I appreciate you for the reasons that we've been talking about, that you are growth partners for me because I learn from you. I become a better person as a result of, of, of sharing and I become a better person as a result of honest, rigorous feedback from others and hopefully uh, vice versa. And most people, unfortunately, live in panels one, two, three, four, five, six, and they never really get to panel seven, eight, nine, because, well, you know, if you have a wall around you, you just don't let people in. So um, I hope everyone has learned something tonight, and thank you very much for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. Good night, everyone.